Well, we've been working on the Supra here. We got some parts coming in. We got wheel bearing. Wheel bearing. Oh, these are heavy. No, I could have just bought the $14 bearings, but I said, you know what, let's go through it. Oh, we have here a Saab. What a Saab story. Put this with all my other Rock Auto. What, do I have the same one? I have to phone Rock Auto and complain about getting the same Saab twice. I, you know, if I had the same Ford, sorry, Sha yeah, same Ford, I really wouldn't complain about having two of those, or even this Opal. Anyway, if I had like 10 of these, I would not complain, because that is like my, by far, my favorite truck in the world right there, Rotary Mazda. But anyway, so we got two wheel bearings because, oh, we got some other stuff in here too. What's this? That's a cell phone. Back brakes. I'm just gonna take these back brakes and put them with the front brakes because then I don't lose them. There you go, not lost. And this box is energy drink, cell phone, garbage. So, we got two wheel bearings for this one because I took off this brakes and you can hear this, ready? You can hear a little bit of play. So when I seen this one, I ordered two and then after I ordered it the next day I came out and I tore this one apart. And there's no play in this one. But you know what, I'm gonna replace both we have the calipers painted. We're just waiting for the discs now to come in the mail and we'll get all this done. So, I've never done wheel bearings on one of these before. Um, I'm mostly used to the older trailer style brakes where it's two front and rear bearings. You put them together. So this one here is a little different. You have a hub assembly and then you have a big bearing and you have a seal and a nut. So I'm imagining I have to pull the plate off the back this piece right here, can you see that? Pull this off without damaging it, and then go from that. Um, so we're gonna attempt to do these. I don't know the preload. I'm gonna take a look at that online. I'm gonna tell you guys about any problems I have, but we are working on this car, and it is gonna be fantastic. Body work is looking great. I'm so happy with this body work. I'm actually thinking about doing other body work. So we'll see. But let's get this thing up. And we can start on this. Um, I know you guys are gonna laugh, but I've been spending a little bit of time cleaning underneath here. Um, I do wanna do a wiring tuck, so I want this in there. I want this all the way in the back, the boot for you uh, Australian guys, because I know there's a bit of you that watch this. I wanna get rid of this, which is an ABS system. I wanna get rid of this which is an ABS system. And I want to get rid of this, which is an ABS system. And I'd like to pretty up this coil pack setup. Uh, I've seen things online that is a nice cover that goes over top of it. It is probably going to be moving its location, just probably down a bit. I'd like to get a small coolant reservoir, much smaller, probably off a of Camry, what I'm going to go for, because it's about an eighth of this size. Um, I'm not going to go for a full engine bay delete. I just want this thing to be a lot cleaner. Now for the wiring, I'm definitely going to have to wait until this car is off the hoist so I can open the doors very nicely. For the brakes, I'm probably going to have to pull the motor to do that, so that'd probably be a winter thing. This might even turn into a winter thing, but uh, we will see. I've been going through and watching a lot of videos online and figuring out what I need to do to move this. And honestly, it doesn't look that bad once you take it apart. I, I've done a lot of wiring on Toyotas, and I'm not going to say I'm an expert at it, but I have some experience. So I think I can get that from there to underneath this dash, no problem. Where it will probably end up, knowing me, is underneath the driver's seat on the back side. So you can access it underneath here. But I'm not 100% sure of that. That's where I'm thinking it's going to end up. But I'm not 100% sure. Because underneath the dash of this thing looks very, very busy. If I could get it all the way to where the glove box is, I'd be extremely happy. But we'll see. But, like I said, right now we're going to be working on the wheel bearings, so I'm going to get started on this, and uh, I'll get back to you guys here in about 10 minutes. Woo! Ric Flair here! I'm just joking. I finally got the inner race, sorry, the outer race out of this bearing. I actually had to use a torch. I had to go to town and refill my oxygen. It comes out through the front. I was a little questioning about it too, don't you boys and girls worry. 
Um, I pounded and pounded and pounded on that and couldn't get it out. As you can see, there's the inner race. It was so nicely stuck to the hub. So I'm actually kind of really happy that I bought the whole hub assembly for this. But, as you can see where I heated up the spindle right there, but as you can see, I didn't damage it. She's just heat sho shocked. We're gonna cool this thing down slowly. We're going to lube this thing up and clean this thing up amazingly. But uh, I built this kit. This is a little warm. Actually, it's really warm. Um, that there is a very thick washer that I ended up putting on the back. And then I put a couple of other washers. And then I put this plate in the front and a nut. And I was able to put pressure and pull it forward. I tried doing it without heating it up with the torch and she wouldn't do it. Now, I didn't have to cut all the way through. I really do not want to touch this. This looks extremely hot. But as you can see, I just had to heat this thing up enough to let it shrink just a bit. So I got that out. It took me two hours to get this out. Um, because the other one's not as bad as this one, I definitely don't think I'm going to do the other one. Call me lazy, call me whatever you guys want to call me, but this is a two and a half hour job and the wheel bearing over there actually feels just fine. So we're going to clean this up. We're going to lube this thing up and then we're going to pound in the new bearing. And then we're going to put in the retaining ring. And we're going to put in the ABS ring. Oh, speaking of ABS, I definitely broke this one. I tried to peel the sensor out without breaking it. That didn't go very well. I definitely broke it. So we'll be pounding that out. And I'll be ordering a new ABS plug off Rock Auto. And it should be here within the next two weeks. I'll have the brakes on this, which are still those Lexus GS brakes are huge. And then we'll be going from there. Um, if you guys want to take this out to work on your bench, it looks like you have to take out a 17 mil here and a 17 mil there. I took out the upper ball joint just so I can get a better pounding position from the back. But that right there should be able to get this up to your workbench so you guys can work on it a lot easier. Um, yeah, so I'm going to let this thing cool down so I don't burn my fingertips any more than they're already burnt. And then we're going to lube it up with anti-seize and we're going to put the new bearing in. My plan to put the new bearing in is to actually pound on the old bearing. I'm going to take this, just tack weld it to this plate, and then pound it in that way. And then that way I know that it's going in square and I'm not damaging the new bearing at all. So let's cool this down for about 20 minutes and then lube her up with anti-seize and we'll get going at this. We got that bearing pushed in. And I was going to weld that piece to it, but I ended up getting a longer bolt, putting a spacer on the back side, putting the old shim on the front side, and the big plate on the front side, and we pulled it back in. Um, so yeah, it actually went in half decent. I'm not nearly as sweaty as I was taking this thing out. Now, if you did notice, though, we did get a little bit of dirt in there, so we're going to clean that up. We're going to reinstall the clip. Now, the new clip, I do not like the design of, so I'm actually going to put the old clip back into this one, the retaining clip gonna fill it full of grease because I want some high quality grease in there as you can see it's got nice white lithium grease but I'm gonna put more grease more grease more better so we're just gonna make sure she's clean full of grease and then we're gonna put it all back together so let's go uh, through the steps again as we're doing this okay so I'm not gonna sugarcoat you guys with how easy this was because it definitely wasn't uh, we had to pound this one in we ended up using this one and we put the two hubs together. One guy bravely held this while the other one swung very aggressively at that with a fairly large hammer. We got it in far enough to put the back nut on. Then we started putting washers to suck it in more um, and get it all the way in. We measured the other side and then we came over here and we made sure that we are correct with our measurements. Um, it was a lot of pounding. It was a lot of trying to get things lined up. It was not easy. Um, very difficult, but new wheel bearing. And we are only doing one because the other one is fine. It is fine. It is not worth the five and a half hours of aggravation to do it. I do have it so that if it needs to be done, I can do it. But it is fine. This one here now is in. All we got to do now is we're going to put a little bit of extra grease on the back side. When you're putting this in, make sure you pull it all the way to this seal so it is fully against the back side. Now I did put extra grease in there, so I am quite happy with that. So we have the ABS sensor, the little gear selector is inside there where the nut is in. We just have to pound over the nut like the factory one was. Then we have to buy a new uh, ABS sensor to put in because I was so nice to break this one. And the last step after we pound it over, this is the old nut, you see how it was just pounded over there. 
I'm going to put a little bit extra grease in here and I'm going to pound this on just a couple light taps to get it on and that just goes right in the back as a dust cap so yeah let's get this on there and go on good uh, I'm not going to put a whole lot of grease in here just a little bit uh, something tells me these are the factory bearings so almost 200,000 kilometers on factory bearings in almost 30 years it's pretty good but we did smash out one stud by mistake we'll be pulling that back in with a wheel nut and some washers so that, that's a pretty easy fix for that. Just upsetting that I hit it with a brass hammer. All right, I hit it with a steel hammer, very aggressively. But uh, we're gonna clean all this dirt out, this bad grease, put some extra wheel bearing grease in here and put this all back together and then pound over that and we are pretty much done on this and I am happy. Well, we got it all back together. Got the dust cap on, new wheel bearing in. We got the stud re put in. Got the upper uh, ball joint put back in. Got the dust cap on, everything's good. So, that is the end of today's video. Uh, kinda went good, definitely wasn't easy. Was a hard job. If you guys think that you're gonna do this in 20 minutes, forget it. I thought I was gonna do this in 20 minutes and trust me, I forgot it. This is a hard job. Next job that we're probably gonna do, I just have to wait for the parts to come in, is rear e-brake. Yep, this thing needs it. It needs to be done. So, just got to wait for the parts to come in. We have nice drilled and slotted rotors for the back. We have nice drilled and slotted rotors going into the front. So, this car is going to be on the road very shortly. Let's just keep waiting for parts to come in. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you guys come back to check out the process on Earl, the overweight Toyota Supra with the 2JZ NA. See you guys back here tomorrow. Bye.